Hi, I'm Taylor and I'm a second year MPH student at Columbia. I've been doing research for a while now. I did almost three years, maybe close to four years of research in undergrad, and I've been doing research throughout my time here at Columbia. And throughout that time, I've gotten a lot of questions, comments, misconceptions about research. So I figured I would take this video to debunk some common research myths. So here we go. So a couple days ago, I put up a story on my Instagram asking for common thoughts about research. And so I have compiled those as well as just some general things that I have gotten over the years and I'm going to go through them. So the first thing is that the common, most common misconception that I hear is that research is sitting in a lab with test tubes and micro pipettes and beakers and that is what we call a wet lab and not all research is wet lab research the majority of actually all the research that i've done and i mean a lot of research out there is not wet lab research when you think about psychology public health uh, sociology all these different kinds of fields have research that's done in a dry lab or you know done with computers on PubMed, on Google Scholar, writing papers, doing statistics, not doing pipetting and swiping on um, agar plates and things like that. Not all research is that. Um, and that I think is why some people think, oh, I don't like research because they don't like doing that. They didn't like their microbio class or they didn't like you know, just the idea of sitting at a bench for um, hours and hours and hours upon end because wet lab research, all research can be very time consuming. And if you don't like that idea, then you can sometimes just totally send research away out of your thoughts as something that you've totally ruled out. And I am the first one to tell you that research, not all research is wet lab research. Um, like I said, all the research I've done has been done in a dry lab. I've done behavioral health research. I have done um, like sociology, sort of social movement type research. I have done claims data research. And I think there's just this general stereotype of what a researcher looks like. So the other thing that I heard a lot, especially when I was getting ready to graduate and heading off to grad school um, from other undergrads was this idea that you have to do research to get into medical school. You have to do research to get into grad school. And while research is certainly very, very helpful for getting you into those places and looks good on your resume, it is not the end all be all of acceptance into grad school, professional school, etc. I know plenty of people who are at the public health school with me who did not do research. I know plenty of people who got into medical school without research. And I think that the main thing that that comes from is this thing that I hate and I like to call the checklist syndrome. So people have this idea of all these things that they have to do to get into medical school or graduate school, you know, do research, volunteer, this, that, standardized tests, blah, blah, blah. And while some of those things might be required, I can tell you that if you are doing things because they are on some type of imaginary checklist that you have heard, um, you know, gets people into grad school and you're just doing it for that reason, that insincerity will come across on your applications, on your personal statement, on your interviews, it'll come across. <laughs> and if you're doing something that you're not passionate about, then you shouldn't be doing it. That, you know, we, we spend a lot of our lives in school and we spend a lot of our lives trying to get to the next step in school, trying to get to grad school, trying to get to medical school. And why waste this big chunk of your life doing something that you're not passionate about. And you know, one of the reasons that I wanted to make this video was to talk about all the different kinds of research there is out there and talk about what research sometimes really is. Um, so that hopefully you can, if that is something that you're interested in, you can look into it more. But you certainly, if you still find that you don't like the idea of sitting around and 
doing literature reviews and looking through other, not that anybody, you know, really loves looking through a lot of literature, but don't do something that you're not passionate about. Don't do something that you don't want to do just so you think, just because you think it's going to get you to the next step. Um, that is one of my my biggest biggest like heartaches and pet peeves is that people are doing research because they think it's going to get them to the next step and not because they're actually passionate about it and I think it really comes across and I um, I just I I feel very strongly that if you are not passionate about research don't do it don't do it because you think it's gonna get you into grad, into grad school or medical school because you can get into grad school or medical school without research you can get into grad school and medical school by doing what you're passionate about. If you're passionate about volunteering at you know, the local homeless shelter and you have thousands of hours of that, that'll get you into medical school and grad school. And I mean, granted, there's a lot of other factors, you know, test scores and numbers and things like that. But I mean, if you have that one thing that you're riding on, don't make it research if it's not what you're passionate about. This next one is somewhat related to that as well. And that is this idea that you have to do research in your major or in your very specific um, sort of track that you're on if you're in grad school. Um, I did behavioral health research in undergrad. Um, that was somewhat health science and somewhat psychology. And that was, you know, a little bit in my, in my field and things like that. But in my time here at Mailman, I, you know, I'm in the health policy and management department and the majority of my research has been done in the sociomedical sciences department. Um, and I have taken not a single class in that department or that like major. However, that is the research that I was passionate about. That was the research I found interesting. That was the faculty member that I really, you know, jived with and believed in. And so that's the research that I did. Um, I think it just all comes back to, again, I won't say it again, but just do what you're passionate about. So if you find that you do want to do research and the idea is interesting to you and you have a general field that you're interested in, there are some like logistic myths that I think put people off sometimes. And one of those is you have to be like a statistics wizard to do research. And that one is also not true. <laughs> I had little to no statistics knowledge when I started doing research in undergrad. I learned on the job, so to say. I learned a statistical software on the fly. Um, your faculty member, Google, YouTube can help you learn how to use software that you might not be familiar with. And, um, you know, there might be some actual solid requirements for certain research positions, but don't let it dissuade you from all research if you don't have a strong statistical background. Um, granted, it's always helpful. Most research does have some type of statistical analysis component to it so it's always helpful but a lot of times like my undergrad research group we had a statistician so we did a lot of the like writing and um, things behind that and we worked with our statistician our amazing wonderful statistician who went on to do her PhD in biostats we worked with her on you know the nitty-gritty of the statistics that we that was completely over our head and we still texted her long after she was gone asking for her help so you definitely do not need to be a biostatistician to do research um, so keep that in mind okay so these last two are um, again I'm gonna get up on my soapbox a little bit here but um, so the first one is that there is this idea that there is this right answer to a research question and so in research, there is this thing, you make a hypothesis, right? Everybody knows that. So that's, you know, like elementary school science fair. You make your hypothesis and you make a null hypothesis. And the null hypothesis is basically just saying, there is no association between these two things that I'm studying. This, the null hypothesis is basically like nothing, like there is nothing here. Like this, this project, there's no association between whatever exposure and whatever outcome you're looking at. And you never accept anything in research. You either reject your null or you fail to reject your null. 
but you never accept anything. You never accept that your hypothesis was correct. You can only reject your null. You can only say, well, in this study with this population, in these exact circumstances that we looked at, there appears to be an association between this thing and this thing. And um, I think that's a common sort of misconception with research. Um, that is a sort of a common thing that gets twisted when research is on the news. You know, you see these things like five cups of coffee a day is great for your health, research found. And research didn't, research found an association. That's what research found. And that the last myth that I wanna talk about blends really nicely into here. And that's that all research that's published and out there is reliable. And that is 100% not true. There is a lot of research out there that is not methodologically sound, that, um, you know, did not properly do its statistic, like its analysis, that, you know, has a lot of bias in it for whatever reason. Um, you know, there a great and very, very popularly brought up public health example is um, the research study that found that, um, you know, vaccinations led to autism. Long story short, not all research that's published out there is good. And um, so that's, you know, one of the great things that I have sort of been able to add to my knowledge base during my MPH is research methodology and really making sure that I understand what is good research, you know, really understanding those methods and those statistical analyses that um, you can look for and you can look at results and truly understand them um, so that you're not reading a news title that says, you know, five, a, a glass of beer every day is great for your heart health or whatever it might be. So, um, you know, Keep those things in mind when you read those, um, you know, crazy health news headlines. And um, if you're interested in research, be sure to ask me any questions you may have. Leave a comment below, message me on Instagram, whatever you feel like. I'm always happy to answer research questions. Um, I will answer any questions that I can about my own personal research, about getting into research, things like that. Um, so if you have them, send them on and um, see you guys next time. I hope this was helpful.